Hello everybody and welcome back to the second shelf and to another recent reads on Sunday. A video that I do once or twice a month in which I discuss the books that I've read recently. Um, and this time around on this Sunday it's a sort of a special edition of my recent reads because all of the books that I will discuss, I think it's five or six, um, were buddy reads. And I thought this booktube institution of buddy reads deserves um, its own recent reads video. Um, you probably all know what buddy reads are, you know, you have these uh, reading togethers in, in, together in book, on booktube, like uh, uh, readathons or read-alongs, where a group of people organizes uh, a read-along either of a certain book or of a certain theme, and then there are prompts, and then it's a week long or sometimes longer. Um, but buddy reads are more, you know, personal because you either read uh, a, a particular book with one person or sometimes with uh, a group of people, and then you discuss it uh, on Voxer. So you have a schedule, uh, for instance, you read a chapter a day and then you check in after two chapters and you discuss the book together. And I love buddy reads. So much so that at a certain point uh, last year, I just did too many so that I didn't have time anymore to do uh, reading, you know, just for myself in my own pace and pick up a book on a whim. Uh, but I still do them regularly and so the books that I will discuss are Buddy Reads in, in June up to the beginning of July. And the first book and first Buddy Read I want to talk to you about is This Memoir, All the Lives We Ever Lived by Catherine Smythe, which came out uh, in January of this year and it's Catherine Smythe. <laughs> just so that you see it. Um, and I read this together with Eric from uh, Lonesome Reader and Kendra from Kendra Winchester. Uh, I'll leave a link to Kendra's channel down below and also a link to Eric's review of the book. Um, and I have to say up front, uh, we, all three of us, we really enjoyed the book. Uh, Catherine Smythe is an American author. Uh, she has an MFA in nonfiction and this is her debut uh, book. So she is a nonfiction writer. Um, it's a grief memoir of sorts because Catherine Smythe wrote the book after her father died, relatively young, he wasn't even 60. Um, but it's also um, uh, um, an attempt to chronicle her father's life. Um, her father was an architect, uh, not always successful. He was an alcoholic uh, for most of his adult life. Um, he had a cancer for... Uh, a decade or more, and in, in the end he died of uh, his cancer. Um, but what uh, uh, Catherine Smythe does is she um, took one of her favorite novels, and that is Virginia Woolf's uh, book To the Lighthouse, as a sort of vintage point into her father's life. Um, because To the Lighthouse, for those of you who read it might know, um, is uh, Virginia's Wool Virginia Woolf's attempt uh, to chronicle um, or, or to to uh, fiction in a fictionalized way um, uh, talk about her own mother, uh, Mrs. Ramsey, in the book, and also her father and the family life. Um, so To the Lighthouse it means a lot to Catherine Smythe because it's one of her favorite books, as I said, but it's also, uh, even though it's fiction, it, it, it has the same purpose, trying to find a way to really chronicle uh, the life of a parent. So she, uh, Catherine Smythe ties her discussion of To the Lighthouse with her uh, discussion of her father's life. Uh, she does the latter from the perspective of the daughter, but also she did research um, trying to um, uh, find out more about her father's life uh, in his youth uh, and the beginning of the relationship with her mother, but also his work. So it's not only, quote-unquote, a grief memoir from the perspective of a daughter. It's really... Uh, uh, the the chronicle of uh, the whole life of a man um, tying it together with a, a favorite book. Um, as I said, I, I really enjoyed this this memoir. I have to say that 
if you have never read Virginia Woolf, and in particular, if you have never read To the Lighthouse, the book might not appeal to you as much. Even though Catherine Smythe um, explains uh, the references to, to the lighthouse, so she doesn't assume that you know, but I think if you have not read the book, um, you might miss a certain connection um, to what Catherine Smith attempts. But if you have read To the Lighthouse, and you don't have to be, you know, a Virginia Woolf scholar, not at all, that's not what I mean, but it helps you if you have some knowledge or relationship uh, to Virginia Woolf's novel. And then I can certainly recommend this book. The next book I want to talk to you about is a modern classic, and that is Jane Austen's Emma. And I buddy read this with Lukash from Totally Pretentious links to his channel, of course, down below. If you're not subscribed to Lukash, you should definitely check him out. Um, Emma um, is uh, uh, was published in 1815. It's set uh, in the beginning of the 19th century, and the main character is Emma, who is a young woman, um, 17, 18, and she is... Um, thinking of herself as a matchmaker. So a friend of hers, Harriet, uh, who is uh, a, a little bit younger um, and of, as the book says, um, disputable birth. So she is an illegitimate child and Emma tries to match her uh, with, an, with, the, with the vicar of, of the village and that does, doesn't work out. And then there's George Knightley, who is the... Um, 30-something family friend, and in the end, as you all know, Emma sees that her ways were wrong, and she marries George, and Harriet marries a farmer that she had been in love with earlier. So all is well in Jane Austen's world. Well, I did not like this book, I have to admit. I thought it was extremely boring. Um, uh, it, it, it took forever to... It, it's quite large for for Jane Austen and it it just bored me and uh, the, the the pacing that it it, it didn't you know it, it didn't move um uh I really felt for Emma because I thought she was the most interesting character and in the end she just sort of, you know, submits to the ways that everybody thinks are the right ways. And George Knightley, I thought, was a pompous, stupid uh, man, uh, very condescending. So I, I couldn't relate to the relationship between the two, uh, but mainly I thought the book was really boring. I'm sorry to say that because I know a lot of uh, people love Emma, but it was not for me. And it was not for Lukas either. I'm not sure whether he will put up a review because he didn't finish the book. So the buddy read was not a success in that sense that we didn't really enjoy the book, but it was a success as buddy reads always are because we could discuss the book with each other. The next book I want to discuss um, is another failed buddy read, so to say, and that is Valeria Luiselli's Lost Children Archive, which came out in February of this year and was long listed for the, men, uh, for the Women's Prize for Fiction. Uh, it was supposed to be a buddy read with Sean uh, over at Sean the Book Maniac, uh, but uh, Sean bailed after, I think, 20 pages or something, so there was not much of a discussion going on. Uh, I finished the book then on my own, and I have to say, for me, it was a mixed bag as well. Um, Valeria Luiselli is a Mexican author, and this is her first book originally written in English. It's a road trip book. We follow um, uh, an couple uh, unnamed, of mother slash wife and her husband slash father, and their two young children, a girl of five-ish and a boy of ten. And they are on a road trip in, in their car from New York to Arizona. Both parents work as soundscape artists, which means they record sounds for various projects. And that is the reason, you know, they are on this road trip. Um, I don't want to get into too much detail about that. So the first half of the book is written from uh, the women's the, the woman's perspective, and I really love that first half. It reads a bit like a memoir, uh, a very introspective 
uh, way of talking about her life, about the road trip, about the children, about her work, uh, but also uh, about uh, uh, immigration issues. She, ha she has a friend in the U.S. Uh, from Mexico, and uh, the, the two daughters of that friend tried to come into the U.S., uh, young children, I mean, we are talking children, not not adults, uh, and they were arrested, and the mother can't find them. So the, there's also a discussion of the uh, illegal uh, immigrant children from Mexico. The the woman tries uh, to find out where these children are kept and how uh, the, the, tries to get to the airport from which they will be deported. So it's a very political book and quite. Um, quote unquote intellectual in in the first half, and that's not to everybody's liking. We don't get a lot of character development. Like I said, it reads like a memoir. But I I loved it. I loved the style. I loved the discussions. I loved the topics. But then in the in the second half of the book, the point of view uh, suddenly switches to the ten year old boy, and that just didn't work for me at all. I was so invested in this memoirish. A voice of the woman that I I was completely taken out of the book when the point of view switched. So it was um, not a success for Sean. It was a bail, and for me it was quite a mixed bag. The next buddy read was again a memoir um, and a recent one, Nady Okorafor's Broken Places, Outer Spaces, and that book came out in June. Uh, I buddy read that with Nashwa from Nashwa S. And if you are not subscribed to her channel, you are really missing out. So please check out the link uh, to her channel below. Um, Nady Okorafor is, of course, known for her fantasy-like uh, fiction. Um, uh, she is a, an American author with Nigerian roots. Her parents um, immigrated from Nigeria, but uh, Nady Okorafor was born in the U.S. The book, really short, it's, it's about 120 pages, discusses, it's a memoir about a certain period in Okorafor's life when she was in college. Uh, she was a successful athlete, um, uh, but she had severe scoliosis in her back, so her, her spine had this S an S curve, um, and it was so severe that the doctors uh, recommended surgery. Um, the surgery went wrong, and she was paralyzed uh, from uh, the hip down. Uh, she regained the ability to walk, but to this day, she has problems uh, keeping her balance, um, uh, feeling her legs, um, and the time in the hospital was sort of the starting point for Okorafor to become a fantasy writer. So both Nashwa and I liked the book, but we both thought it was in a way too short to discuss uh, the issues. Uh, the best parts were the parts in which um, uh, Okorafor discusses her time uh, just before and after the operation and how she uh, uh, learned to walk again. Um, but a lot of themes about how she started to write, and one of the uh, scenes is that she was heavily medicated because of the pain, and she has had hallucinations, and those hallucinations, she wrote them down, and that those sort of triggered um, uh, the, the fantasy-like books she later, later on wrote. But there were so many topics that were interesting and worthwhile, and they were just touched upon, you know, brushed really briefly, but not uh, discussed in any depth. So I would say if you are a fan of Nady Okorafor's work, then the book is certainly worthwhile. But if you are, um, you know, not familiar with Okorafor and just want to read a memoir uh, of an, uh, a college athlete uh, who was paralyzed for uh, a period of time, it might not be... Uh, it might not go deep enough. And the last two buddy reads I want to talk to you about were both short story collections. And if you're following me, uh, or have been following me for any length of time, you know that I don't read a lot of short stories. It's just not quite my thing, short stories. So, 
Uh, but anyway, the first uh, book I want to talk about, uh, I have it here next to me, is um, The Awakening by Kate Chopin, which was published in 1899. And I read this together with Terry uh, from uh, Miss Terry B, um, who is a booktuber who recently came back to booktube. So I'm really happy. Welcome back, Terry, and I hope you'll all subscribe to her channel. Um, uh, this is a collection of a novella, The the Awakening, and then four short stories. Um, the Awakening is uh, Kate Chopin's most famous uh, work uh, because it talks about um, um, the life of a woman, married woman, from the woman's perspective. Uh, she is really unhappy with her marriage and she tries to break free. Uh, she has uh, sexual encounters um, with various men, even though it's not explicit in the book, but it still caused, obviously, a riot when it was published in 1899. Um, I'm not going to speak uh, for Terry, but I think we both felt the same way. The idea of the novella, The Awakening, appealed more to me than the actual execution. Um, uh, I I thought um, I always had to remind myself what the, the this novella meant in 1899 because for me I couldn't quite get a grip of the main character the the woman her her decisions uh, seemed um, um, rash to me um, especially the decision uh, in the end which I'm not going to spoil. So, yeah, I like the way, um, uh, I like the writing style a lot and I like the way the scene was set, but I couldn't quite connect with the main character. Uh, the four short stories that are uh, added into this, uh, to this edition appealed more to me, um, uh, which was kind of strange because I read this book because of The Awakening. But anyway, if, if you are interested in, let's say, an early almost feminist kind of writing about a woman's life and her attempt uh, to um, break loose from convention and from an unhappy marriage, then I can certainly recommend it. And especially because of this edition, the, the four stories that are included. And the second short story collection and last buddy read I want to talk to you about is Catherine Mansfield, The Garden Party, a collection of 15 uh, stories published in 1922. And I read this with Adam from Momentum Mori. Uh, Adam already put up a review. I will leave a link to it down below. And if you, because Adam had a booktube hiatus, but he came back with a splash in typical Adam fashion. So if you are maybe new to booktube and uh, are not subscribed to, to Adam's channel, please go and subscribe because he is wonderful. Um, this collection um, is the last one that uh, Catherine Mansfield published. She died really young, um, in her mid-30s. She was a New Zealand writer uh, and one of the prominent figures of modernist writing. So in the vein of, you know, Virginia Woolf um, uh, or James Joyce. Um, the 15 stories in here are of quite uh, a variety of length. The first one at the bay is the longest one with almost 40 uh, pages, so it's, it's almost a novella, and some of the stories are just three or four pages long. Um, uh, I think uh, Adam and I, we both felt that the longer stories were more successful in a way. Um, I, I think a little bit like with the Kate Chopin book, uh, the idea of, of Catherine Mansfield as one of the first, you know, modernist uh, female short story writers appealed more to me than some of the stories. Um, but I really enjoyed At the Bay, the first one, and even the shorter ones, they were, they were from the 15, I would say certainly half that I will remember. The, the recurring theme of the female experience, um, the, the, the way uh, uh, a class plays a role, um, uh, death is an important um, uh, a theme in most of the, the stories, and the writing uh, is very atmospheric and really captures uh, um, the, the, the surroundings and the characters in just 
tiny brush strokes. I think the, the, the craftsmanship is, is really excellent. So I can, uh, I, I think I can recommend this, especially if you have never read Catherine Mansfield. And there are stories in there that will stay with me for a long time. That's for sure. So these were my recent buddy reads. Thank you very much uh, for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. As always, I'm looking forward to talking to you in the comment. If you made it to, uh, I think this is over 20 minutes long. So thank you for sticking with it. And I'll see you all soon in the next one. Bye-bye.